Welcome to today's episode of What to Say and How to Say It, the podcast to help you fix your marriage. I'm Shai Lewis. I'm here with Dina Rosner. Our mission is to help you, Christian married man or woman, navigate conflict and build connections so you can have a thriving marriage. So today our topic is what to say when you're dealing with a complainer. So, all right. We know in Philippians, God tells us to do all things without grumbling or complaining. But uh, if you've been on earth for longer than two seconds, <laughs> I'm sure there's been a few things here and there you might have found to gripe about. Um, you know, we call those moments our negative Nancy moments. Um, sometimes we have negative Nancys in our lives, those people that just seem to find fault in everything. And, you know, sometimes it's, we're aware of it, and then other times, not so much. So we want to talk about the what to say in those moments, and how we can just step out of it, hopefully, or help others do the same. So welcome, Nina. Have you ever had someone that has been a negative Nancy in your life? Um, well, you know, it's always the other person. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I've been that person and I, I think I know a few, absolutely. And, and the, you know, the whole thing, we were talking uh, prior to cutting this about Moses and I just am so thankful. I I never was tasked with anything like that. The people that are with us at Greater Impact, as you know, are just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So much joy, such positive attitudes, such optimism, joy of the Lord. Like it's great. And I think of Moses and I go, what a horrible assignment the Lord gave him. <laughs> 11 yeah. day trip. But no, it takes 40 years with a bunch of people that food is falling from the sky. And they're still complaining. Like, are you kidding me? Well, I don't know if it fell from the sky, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like he's, oh man, I get, yes. And then all the complaining, shoot me now. I wouldn't want that. And and yet sometimes get overwhelmed. And it's like a wet blanket. It's like just as you're doing the intro today, I'm just sitting here thinking of a few people that I, I love and yet suck the ever-loving life out of me <laughs> to be around for more than a few moments. It's just tough. Yeah, it is tough. And, you know, a lot of times, like I said, we, we do this when we feel helpless. We feel like, you know, things are out of control. And the truth is there's actually things we can do differently mm -hmm. if we are able to recognize that in itself, that you can actually maybe do something about the thing you're complaining about. So that's what we want to talk about today is the what to say. If you don't do this well, you might end up, I don't know, missing an opportunity to move forward in a space where you have felt completely helpless. So I was reading a story today about um, a man, a poor man. It's, it's a made up story fiction. And I, I thought it, it, it really sent home the message around how perspective is everything. And the story goes, it's about a, a poor man who had a small, tiny house with his wife and six kids. There was barely any space. It was like a one bedroom. And he just got so frustrated with that and went to his rabbi and asked, what can I do? I have no space, all these people in my house, we're all bumping into each other. And so the rabbi tells him, okay, do what I say and then come back and we'll talk again. So the rabbi tells him, go get your cow, go get your goat, go get your chickens, put them all in your house and then come back. <laughs> so on top of those six kids and his wife, he's got all these animals in his house. So then the goat starts to eat up the couch. The cow starts to make a mess. The chickens are everywhere. So he goes back, of course, complaining even more about his situation. 
And so then one by one, the rabbi tells him, okay, get rid of the, the chickens, get rid of the goat, get rid of the cow. And then now suddenly he's so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same house, yeah. the same six kids, same wife, but he's got all the gratitude in the world because the animals are out. And I thought, wow, mm. you know, isn't that something how our perspective can change if things actually get worse, yeah. you know? So I don't know. What are your thoughts around that? Is that a it, thing? <laughs> it is, it is. And I think all of us that have had children that have grown and left home have that perspective. Um, when we get grandkids or maybe when that last one leaves, suddenly the house is quiet, right? Mm -hmm. I got, I went to the uh, barn today with my daughter-in-law who I love wildly and she's such a good mom. Uh, we took the two-year-old and the, the new baby, she's four months old and it, the, that's the I, chaos, right? So I, I go get my horse and we're just doing small things with little people. And of course there's moments of drama uh, around, you know, bugs and, you know, just flowers and, and it was just, it was wonderful, just absolutely wonderful. And the baby got hungry, had to feed him and or feed her. And, you know, and just, just, and I can remember being in that stage in my life and being so exhausted and stressed out because most of the communication you get from a two-year-old's complaint, you know, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that changes really that much. Um, I mean, it, it evens out for sure as you train your children to have a positive attitude, right? But mm -hmm. from the get-go, babies are babies complain, they fuss, they whine, and they complain. And um, and then some of a you know, some don't learn easily how to shift that. But we actually, our brains actually get damaged from complaint. So mm -hmm. yeah, we shrink the hippocampus, which it there's a connection with complaining and Alzheimer's. So oh, there's wow. a thing, yeah. And then on top of that. Um, we, when we release cortisol, which happens when we complain or when we spend 30 minutes. So this is a note to you therapists, because I don't know how those people do that for a living. Yeah. I'm right? so glad I'm a coach. Um, we're focused on wins and you know, what, who are we moving to, you know, what possibilities are like, Oh, but you know, 30 minutes of listening to somebody complain will actually negatively impact your brain. You'll start shrinking your hippocampus, which then eliminates the ability long-term to solve problems and to think intellectually. I mean, it's a huge thing to dwindle our brain because of the way we communicate, but we have that effect on ourselves and others when we bring voice. And so I think it's pretty smart of God. Hello. Um, this has been in the Bible for centuries you know, to bring blessings and not curses from our mouth, you know, to um, give praises and to encourage one another versus um, tear each other down. You know, there's real wisdom in that, not just from a, oh, everybody will feel good. Like, no, it's not about that. It's like, you've got different options of reality here. Which one are you going to live in? The one that shrinks your brain and makes you miserable or the one that, you know, is actually kind of a fun party, you know? Yeah. I'll pick door number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, I just love when science supports what God says. Like mm -hmm. that is so mm -hmm. cool. And it makes so much sense. Yeah. Of course, if you're hearing about a problem over and over, your ability to actually solve the problem diminishes just from an emotional. Right. But there's actually something that's happening in the brain also. And I just, I love when that happens. God is so cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So we talk to a lot of wives who don't know this information and who feel helpless in their marriages. And I was reading somewhere where complaint is also a way we regulate our emotions. I didn't know that either. But um really complaint doesn't accomplish anything it, it right. if you think about it you're just not really like we're saying solving anything and so 
what would you say to the wife or what is the what to say for that wife who feels helpless or feels hopeless and is just full of all of the things that are not right in her marriage and can't see the forest from the trees and you know kind of needs to to shift gears a little bit what is what is the what to say to that person yeah so just just to be real here um i'll tell you what my coach told me on monday Oh. Uh, I don't, everybody, need, I'm not any different than anybody, you know, yeah, we talk about this stuff and I'd love to pretend I've arrived, but what's really true is I'm not any different from anybody in our audience. You know, I have moments of hopelessness, right? I have moments where I don't know what to do next and I'm confused. And I was in one of those and, I, and then, and my coach basically said to me, Nina, you need to die. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know that's true. Like, yeah, yeah I, I must decrease so he can increase, you know, death to self, you know, I get all of that, but I didn't get it because um, I had this mindset around something that I thought was supposed to be a certain way. And, and she's like, why do you keep doing that? Like you, you've been doing that for a long time, years. Why yeah. do you keep wanting this thing? And I'm like, well, so is it the wanting of the thing that needs to die? Like, or is it the thing? Like, am I putting this thing that I want on the altar? And she's like, no, it's the desire. And so as we look at this, where, where does the enemy want us? He wants us in hopelessness. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And so how does he do that? He makes us hopeless. He lies to us. He twists things. Did God really say, you know, makes us doubt and so when we do that and we follow that, we walk in the enemy's path instead of in Jesus's, you know, in the dust of the rabbi Jesus's feet, when we're not behind him in this and letting him lead, then we're in a space where hopelessness, yep, that's the destination. That's where we're going. And so what's needed there is, you know, you can say it however you want to say it. We, we do deliverance prayer, you know, and greater impact. We do healing here, you know, so you, you can get delivered, but then you need to heal from that. You need to walk that out. You need to receive love in that space, but you need to kill off that unholy desire for that person or circumstance to be different than it is because that's not living in reality. Yeah. And I don't want that to sound like judgment because here I was, you know, Monday, not living in reality. And we need each other. We need people to you know, jerk a knot in our chains and go, hey, you know, can you, the planet's over here. Where are you? Like, you're not even looking at anything real right now. Like, come over here, get back on track. And and so that's that's a lot of it right there is the enemy will pull us into a space that's not even real. We live, we predict a negative future. We replay all the negative past instead of looking at this one little moment and seeing what's true about it right now and then choosing who we will serve mm -hmm. will i follow the enemy and find everything that's possibly wrong here and and decide it's going to go like it always goes or will i choose to follow the lord mm -hmm. who has set the captives free healed the brokenhearted is here to destroy the works of the enemy and am i going to choose to do some scary small thing and show up differently yeah yeah i'll, I'll take door number two again <laughs> <laughs> door number two is two for O. Oh. so okay that sounds great but she's overwhelmed she's flooded she's triggered she's consumed with her situation and she wants to do what you're telling her to do she doesn't know how to do mm -hmm. that yeah then what yeah so that's that yeah no kidding that's why we have strength and dignity the uh, membership site for women um and 2.0 your marriage and that sounds like i'm making a plug but here's the deal if you don't and, and maybe it's not with us but we know how this works it's not our first rodeo and we've been down this road before and there's a ton of people on our team that walk with people as they navigate this stuff that's why we do our conference every single year women come to link arms with other women that are on this journey and they form the relationships because that's what's the missing piece here. If she does not have someone to call, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. then she's that's it man there there's no coming back from that that's you get stuck in that and it becomes who you are and and so what do you need you need community you need someone to reach out to and that's in a, well in my circles that's us that's what we do and you know why we do that because somebody was there for us and we know what it's like to be on the receiving end and then we give back to it um through the ministry opportunities yeah i'm i'm really can i talk about the conference for a second yeah absolutely <laughs> go ahead <laughs> you know i'm i'm just really really excited about this because we're going to do all the things i just talked about at the conference, we're going to do deliverance prayer. We're going to do healing prayer. We're going to, yeah, you've got that wound from when you were seven years old and your parents did their best and boy, did that mess you up, man. And the enemies use that your whole life. And we're going to show you how to walk out of that and step into victory and freedom and then navigate some of your tough communication situations with that person in your life who's a challenge to deal with and just won't change. You know what? You can show up different in that space. All of our coaches are going to be there. Like we work with people. Coaching is part of the whole thing. I mean, it is, it's an incredible experience and people come back because of the experience there. And it's different every year because the people are everybody, even if you came last year, you're a different person this year when you show up. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I would echo that and, you know, put that plug in myself because I've been twice and both times I've come away with new information, new insight, new growth opportunity. And what's so cool is you don't realize how much power you actually have. The things that I have learned from Strength and Dignity and the conference are really not so much to deal with the hard relationship, but really about me and who I mm -hmm. am in Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the things that I can control that help me show up mm -hmm. better in all of my relationships. And that's always a good idea, you know? So if it's, it may not be you're struggling in your relationship. You just want to be a better person. It's still worth coming and, um, you know, growing in the Lord. So, and it's fun and, you know, we have fun while we're there. Oh Yeah. We have a good time. It's a, it's a beautiful experience. It's like a big pajama party, <laughs> so, you know, um, with, with teaching and it's a very relaxed atmosphere, very safe. Yeah. And I I've heard that be the big describing word for people is it's life change, but safe. And, and it's just, it's a confidential environment where people can talk about what's really going on. Yeah. And then move forward, get actual help. And, and I know for myself, um, I keep growing too. And you know, it, it's so amazing when the Lord sets you free from something and then you you take that first step of obedience in that space and you're like, oh, is this because you have the trench in your brain, right? You have this physical being body that you're stuck with, even though you're a spiritual being. So you have a trench in your brain of the old way of doing things which may be to our topic today, complaining, right? right? But when you've been set free, when you've been delivered of that and you do something new it, and you, and then you look back on it and it's like, wow, that wasn't that hard. Like yeah. it seemed like it for a hot second. And then, wow, look, oh my word, like I can do this again. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. can be anything from, like I made a decision this week that is not a small decision. And I agonized over it for, eight months. And the crazy thing is, is that one, I, I was recently uh, went through another deliverance session and, and did some healing work. And now it's like, what, what was so hard about this? Like, it literally looks that completely different. I'm like, why was this hard for me? That is, I mean, I'm not dissing myself or anything. I'm just surprised at how easy it is on this side of that mountain, this side of that battle. And, and that's, that's the way God designed us is to be able to be free indeed, <laughs> you know? And also what we really see is God showing up mm -hmm. for us as we take those hard steps that feel like the hardest thing in the world. And then he just like carries us into that next level mm -hmm. and shows us who he is in the thing you know, that he's so much bigger and 
it's really not about us anyway, you know, right. he turns us through it. And let me tell you, my relationship with the Lord has grown so much just in taking steps, making forward movement and mm-hmm. trusting him in that and seeing him show up in my life in a new way and having that fellowship with him where if you're stuck that you would never get to experience, you know? And so anyway, I know we can go on and on, oh, yeah, right? <laughs> He's so good that way. But, you know, to your point, I'm thinking about the complaint thing. You know, everybody has things that happen to them. I do too. And, and there's this, this thing in our, like, it's a heart of complaint. It's a, it's a yeah. weight that we're carrying. It's the cortisol. It's a stress. There's all of that. And that can all be present, or you can still have this life event that occurs that you're like, huh, okay. I'm curious about this. I don't know maybe what I need to do here. I'm a little confused. I need to navigate this. God, what are we doing here? And that is a totally different experience. So you're communicating about what happened, but there's no negative energy behind it. There's no anger and fear and and ugly wrapped up in that. It's There's no wounding in it. So when we're healed in spaces, it doesn't mean that life is all rosy and whatever. Life is still life. And sometimes it's terrible. And so what do you do with that? Well, you navigate it, but it doesn't have the negative weight and energy that it used to. And mm-hmm. so there's a huge difference, I think, in, in talking about what's going on with you and your life and whatever in a way that is productive and healthy. And then this complaint thing that yeah. I think the enemy just wants us to mm, yeah. have a heyday with, you know, just oof, keep stay negative, stay messed up, be miserable. Not good. Yeah, absolutely. And when I think about the things we learn, like the steps and how it teaches us how to get in front of our emotions, those are the things that help us to show up untriggered and bulletproof, as we always say, so that we can have the proper communication instead of the complaints. So we can speak to the facts but also move in love and and honor and respect and self-respect. And these are the type of things that that we learn and that just apply everywhere. I don't care if it's home, work, or church. You you can use this stuff everywhere. So check us out. Uh, It's happening next month. Go to our website and find the link and sign up if you have time. So I just want to summarize today what we have learned because I did capture, even though we kind of went all around, (laughs) some takeaways for our listeners around complaints. So if you're around a person that is a complainer, or if you are a complainer yourself, I would say the first thing is to die to yourself. Think about, is this your flesh or is this God speaking? Find the lie that you believe, because there's probably a lie somewhere in there, and then look for the truth. It might take some prayer. It might take someone else walking with you through that, but um, do the work to uncover what God says about your situation. And then find support, find community to help gird you up in that truth. Um, This is where you will learn how to show up differently. This is how God will use people around you to help you in your communication. There will be times where you fall, get back up, try again and keep going. All right, so what will you do with the information you have today? We invite you to check out our website, as I said, greaterimpact.org. We have a free PDF for you called Five Tools for How to Stop Walking on Eggshells. Um, We also have the conference coming up, check that out, as I said before. And we also have another course two courses, actually, Strength and Dignity and 2.0 Your Marriage for you to sign up. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, we invite you to click on that subscribe button and share with your friends and then join us for the next one. We have enjoyed you today and we will see you next time.